Hello everyone, my name is Sam Spade and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals and GML tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about the basics of scripts. And this is going to be part one of what will ultimately be two parts. A script, as we mentioned in the function tutorial, is a custom function, the function that you make. At the moment, scripts are currently global. This means that any instance can reference or use them. They act just like a function in GameMaker Studio 2, just like one of the built-in functions. They do something, they may take one or more inputs, and they may provide one and only one output. And scripts are essential. They allow you to name a piece of code and reuse it later, turning a complex action into just a single command, a single line of code. And this helps you to prevent code duplication, which makes your code easier to read, use, and debug. Since, at this point, scripts and functions are essentially identical, we can reuse the function diagram from the function tutorial to demonstrate scripts as well. Scripts will take an input, and this can be optional, just like with functions. It will do something, and then it can, but does not have to, return a value. One additional thing to know with scripts is that scripts can call other scripts. Now, probably under the hood, the built-in GameMaker functions also call other functions. But since we can't see that or step through those, we didn't really talk about it in the functions tutorial. But now that we're talking about scripts, it's important to understand the concept that scripts can call other scripts. So if you have an instance and that instance has an event and that event calls a script, you're going to go into the script, you're going to do something, and then you're going to go back to the instance, back to running this code. But like I said, scripts can also call scripts. So you could be running code in an instance's event and that could call a script, which could call a script, which could call another script. And then this script will return or finish and go to this script, which will return or finish and go to this script, which can return and finish and go back into this instance. We'll see some examples of this when we're stepping through scripts in the debugger. The important takeaway here is that the script always returns to the thing that called it. So this script will go to this instance. That makes sense. But this script when it finishes, it does not go over here. It returns to the script that called it, which when this script finishes, returns to this instance. A script requires a name, which you will pick. It follows the same naming conventions as a variable. And then it will require some code. And then optionally, you get to select your arguments. You get to select what input values you want to give to the script, or you want the script to require, might be a better way of saying it. And you get to select what return value you want the script to provide, if any. So this could be a very, very basic script. It's only one line of code, and all it does is print the debug message, hello world. It doesn't take any arguments, and it doesn't return any value. It just does one thing. So jumping back to the function diagram, it's not using any input, it's not using any output, it's just doing something, and that is printing hello world to the output window. But now, let's talk about arguments. Arguments are values that you pass into the function. As we just covered, scripts do not necessarily need arguments, but you can use them. And in GML, arguments are stored in the built-in argument variables, argument zero, argument one, all the way up through argument 15. Now there's an asterisk here because GameMaker Studio 2 can also use something called the argument array. And that's something that we'll cover in the second of these two tutorials on scripts. For now, we're just going to pretend that the only type of argument that GML has is the argument zero, argument one, and so on. So here is an example of a script which takes an argument. This is another very simple script. All it does is it takes an argument, which we'll call a message, and it prints this message to the output window. In short, it's simply a wrapper script for the show debug message. Finally, let's talk about returning a value from a script. A script can return one and only one value. The reason there's an asterisk is to note that you could return something like an array or other data structure, and by doing so, return something that is holding multiple values. But the script itself can only return one thing. It can return that array or that data structure or a single value, but it can only return one thing. Scripts also do not need to return a value. There's an asterisk here because GameMaker Studio 2 returns zero by default. The last thing to note is that if you do return a value, you must do something with that value for it to be meaningful. 
for it to have any meaning in your code. So putting all of that together, we have an example of a script that takes an input and provides an output. The input it takes is a number, and it's simply going to take that number, add 5 to it, and return the new value. So here we have my number equals 0. We're going to pass my number into the script, add 5, and we're going to assign that return value to a new variable, my new number. Note that this will do something because we're using that return value. If we just called the script add 5, my number, it would do this, but when it returns the result of this argument, it doesn't go anywhere. So we're essentially wasting the script call. It's not doing anything. But enough of the theory, let's switch over to GameMaker Studio 2 and see some of this in action. So before we run this code in the debugger, let's walk through it. So I have the three scripts from the slides, hello world, Hello world, just a show debug message. It doesn't take any inputs or provide any outputs. It's just going to do something. Then I have the instance variable, my number, equal to zero. We have the script add five, which again is just going to take that argument that whatever we pass into it, add five to it, and return that new value. And it's going to assign that to my new number. Then we're going to run it one more time just to show what happens if you don't assign the return value to anything. And then finally, we have the debug script, which is really just a wrapper script around show debug message. All right, let's run the debugger. Okay, so we've stopped at the first breakpoint. But before I go on here, I want to talk about a few things regarding the debugger. We're going to have a whole tutorial on the debugger. But just so what I'm doing makes sense, there are two things I want to cover. First, you can see over here, I have the call stack. We'll also have a tutorial on the call stack at some point, but this basically tells us where we are in our code. Right now, you can see that we're in the object scripts create event, line six. The next thing I wanna mention is that this button up here steps into the function. So we have our function, hello world, and when I step into it, now you can see two things have happened. First, we are inside the function, hello world, and second, that is represented up here in our call stack. If this part right here doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. We will have a whole tutorial on it. So our function, hello world, again, doesn't take any inputs, doesn't give any outputs. It just does something. And that is write hello world to the console log down here. Next, we're going to create the instance variable, my number, assign it to zero. Then again, we're going to use the step into function button to step into this function. And here we've passed argument zero. Argument zero is my number, so it's also zero. We're going to add five to it and return that whole value and assign it to my new number. So now you can see my new number equals five because we took zero, we passed it in, we added five to it, and then we return that value and we assign that value to my new number. Now we're going to run this script one more time but we're not going to assign anything. So as you can see, the script still works. We go into the script, we do five plus five. So now argument zero is plus five, because even though we're calling it number and argument zero, the argument that we've passed in has changed. Here, we're passing in my number, which equals zero. And here, we're passing in my new number, which equals five. So we're going to do this, and this will result in 10, and we will return 10, but since we're not assigning it into anything, that value is just lost. We're not using it, we're not doing anything with it. So it just goes out and then is gone. Finally, we'll run our last custom function, the debug function. And one thing you should note about arguments is they don't have to be a predefined variable. Here, I'm just saying that the argument I wanna pass in is test complete. It doesn't have a variable associated with it, it's just this. And we pass that in and you can see argument zero is test complete. And we're just going to pass that into the show debug message. And again, it will print out down there. One other thing I want to cover is how to create a script. In GameMaker Studio 2, you can do that by going over to the scripts and then right clicking and choose create a script. Or as you can see, Alt C is the shortcut. Then like we covered in the slides, you have to name the script. So we're just going to call this script A. Now you write the code. And we're going to make this just a simple script that says show debug message. I'm script A. 
And now let's create another script called script B. Here, use the keyboard shortcut this time. So now we have script B and this will just be show debug message. I'm script B. Okay, and now let's go back to our main code. And right after hello world, let's run script A. Okay, so we've run the debugger. We've stopped at our breakpoint. We'll go into this first one, print out hello world. And now, oh, let me switch the resource view over here. So now you can see we're going to run script A. Script A is going to print out its debug message. And then it's going to run script B. And notice that here we've gone into script B. So this is what we were talking about before with this slide. Our instance has called script A, which is now calling script B. And you can see over here in the call stack that when we finish script B, we go back to script A. And then after script A, we go back to our instance. So our instance calls script A, which calls script B, and then B goes back to A, which goes back to our instance. So in summary, scripts are custom functions. Currently they're global. You simply create them and then you can use them anywhere. And scripts allow you to take complex actions and turn them into a single reusable line of code that you can easily call wherever you want to accomplish something. As always, the links in this slide will be below along with links to the source code and the slides themselves. That's it, thanks for watching.